again and today I am making something called laksam. No, it's not a typo. No, I'm not pronouncing it wrong. Uh, laksam is a something I have actually never eaten. I've seen it when I was in Kelantan and if you followed my broadcast in the past or actually just in the last week or two, Kelantan is actually one of the northernmost states. It is the northernmost state in Malaysia in the peninsula and it borders on um, Thailand. So the cuisine there is quite unique. I visited um, the place a couple of years ago, uh, courtesy of Tourism Kelantan and was very, very fascinated with the food there. Now this recipe is not too different. In fact, uh, the sauce is actually the same as uh, something I covered uh, uh, just in the last week or so and uh, I am just making sure that I am live but uh, because we're a couple of minutes early what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and play um, this short little clip about this upcoming show for those of you who are based in Sydney Australia and are watching this so just give me a second uh, where are we here we go Okay guys, it's uh, Jackie M and I am here with a um, renowned Malaysian stand-up comic, Douglas Lem. Douglas, what are you doing in Sydney? Uh, I am here to do a show for the Sydney Comedy Festival together with my friend Hua Jen Han. Our show is called Buy One Free One. That's the name of the show. It does not mean you get a free ticket for every ticket you purchase. Because I've had some people ask me that. Uh, no, you, if, uh, you buy one ticket and you get one ticket. But the show is called Buy One Free One. So if anything, it's like you pay for one comedian and you get the other one for free. Who you're paying for, who you get for free, I don't know. Just come and watch and decide yourself. That's happening at the end from Thursday, which is the 27th, to Sunday, which is the 30th of April. Fabulous. Thank you. Okay, I hope that worked okay, and I hope you caught uh, the audio and all that okay. But yeah, anyway, so that was Douglas Lim. He's one of the most well-known comedians uh, from Malaysia. Uh, I had never heard of him about five years ago when he first uh, did a show in Sydney, and I actually was pregnant with Noah at the time, and I filmed him and posted the video on YouTube, and because I'd never heard of the guy at the time, right? I didn't you know, know him from any other comedian. It was a great show, posted it up on YouTube, and uh, to this day, it's one of my most watched videos on YouTube. So uh, it's a lot more popular than most of my cooking videos that I've posted up there. So um, if you're based in Sydney, Australia, and you're free over the next few days, Thursday through to Sunday, go and buy your tickets at the Enmore uh, Theatre website and check it out. I'm going to be there tomorrow night. So if you're... Uh, if you show up there, just make sure you say hello, okay? Um, right here. So back to the uh, what we're doing today. First of all, quick shout out to Lenovo Australia for the laptop I use for my live broadcast. I am using a Lenovo Y700, which is a gaming laptop. And also I use another one. I use a Lenovo Yoga Home 500, which is a uh, desktop plus laptop, uh, plus um, tablet, right? And I use that to uh, monitor my stream as well. And Sh Shannon, hi. I want to <laughs> eat that fish. Hey, yeah, look, anyone, you know what? Especially, I really, really struggle to finish all the food that I cook, especially the ones I do on Friday, okay? Now, any vegan, because I do vegan Fridays at the moment, I might have to rethink this at the rate I'm going because I've got all this vegan food stuck in my fridge that nobody's eating because I'm not personally vegan, right? I know any vegan who's ever tried my vegan dishes absolutely love them to death, but I personally am not vegan and I usually already have too much food lying around. Okay, so what we're doing today, this is called laksam, right? And what it it's made of essentially is a sauce that's made from steamed fish and I've got my <coughs> that's Noah. Noah say hello. Hey. <laughs> so I'm going to make the sauce which is made of steamed fish with coconut milk um, and the fish is going to be basically blended and mixed into the sauce. It's quite interesting um, but I just need to turn on my steamer and I've got the fish here and I've got some leftover cooked fish I'm going to add to the equation as well. 
um, because I'm just trying to use up all this fish. But um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the kind of fish I've got here because the last time I did stick this particular sauce, right, uh, is the same sauce that goes into a dish called laksa kelantan, okay? Laksa and laksam. Uh, everyone, I think most people would know laksa by now, certainly here in Australia anyway. Most people think of laksa as kind of like a spicy coconut milky uh, uh, soup that we serve with noodles okay now if you're from malaysia especially if you come from parts of malaysia that aren't um, kuala lumpur right or nearby uh, you will know of other versions of laksa and up in kelantan the laksa is so different from what you get in kl that the sauce is actually white okay um, unlike regular laksa, which usually has a lot of, uh, you know, uh, uh, red and yellow through it, the sauce with laksa kalantan is white. And the same sauce is used for laksa and also for what's called laksam in uh, Kelantan, okay? And laksam is available not just in Kelantan, but in a couple of states. Um, but this particular version, assuming that, uh, yeah, assuming there is a difference, I don't know if there is, but uh, this particular version essentially um, is made from rice flour. So the point of difference between a laksa kelantan and a laksam is the type of noodles that are used for this. Okay, usually with laksa kelantan, the noodles you use are what we call rice spaghetti. So they're like white uh, fresh rice noodles, okay, like um, like spaghetti shaped rice noodles. But for laksam, there I think the uh, part of the appeal of laksam is essentially the um, the fact that the noodles are freshly made and they're made into rolls, okay? Now, as a Chinese, okay, because I am ethnically Chinese, even though I'm born um, and uh, raised in Malaysia, as a Chinese, there is something very similar, what we Chinese call ji uh, jiang fan in Cantonese, or ho fan, you know, if you're from other parts of like uh, Asia, okay? I, I know it's, it's very, very complicated. I'll, I'll sit down with you guys and explain all the differences one of these days. Luckless. Hey, how you doing? Good to see you. <laughs> um, yeah. So, and yeah. So essentially, the um, the, the, the this is like a, I've made Ji Chong Fan quite a lot in other broadcasts. Okay, but uh, I don't know how different this recipe is. But the idea is the same. It's basically a mixture of rice flour and tapioca flour and water and a little bit of salt and a bit of oil as well. In this instance, you mix it up into a very thin batter and then you steam it in layers okay in a tray so i'm going to give that a go and see how it turns out but first like i said i've got the steamer going and i'm going to throw this fish in now this is actually two different types of fish if you can see it you can't really make it out because um the last time i did this particular dish i actually just used basa fillets now in malaysia a basa fillet is like a, a white fish fillet okay uh which is very very cheap here in australia you can buy it frozen for uh, you know about six bucks upwards per kilo okay in malaysia we use actually uh fish that's uh, what we call that have a dark meat right um, my brother describes it as a muddy meat I don't know if that's kind of like how Aussies think of it but the point of difference is that if you can think of mackerel versus like you know a uh, ling fillet or something like that so that's the difference between uh, this fish I'm using and uh, basso okay so this time I've got fish that more closely replicates the kind of fish we get in Malaysia but I bought two different types because I wanted to see how they turned out right and uh, this is what I found at my local uh, fishmongers just about a few days ago. Okay, these are two different types of fish, right? But one is like about a third the price of the other. Okay, so this one here is called, it was uh, labeled as, I think, uh, yellowtail. Okay, this was about three bucks, three bucks fifty a kilo. Okay, maybe three ninety. Um, and this was um, tagged as blue mackerel, I believe. I'm not very, very good with fish names, in all honesty. So this was tagged as blue mackerel, and this was like about 12 bucks a kilo, I think, right? So I thought, look, let's buy one of each. I actually bought two of each, and I cooked some of it er earlier, um, and then see how they differ. And in, um, in fact, they actually taste very, very similar. So that's your cost saving for the day, if you see. <laughs> 
<laughs> if you see a yellow fin and you're wondering if you should risk paying only uh, three or four bucks a kilo for your fish, you know, go for it, it's fine. Okay, especially for this particular dish anyway. I mean, granted the, I'm just gonna show you. How sweet, huh? You wanna play with this? You wanna play with this? Okay, here you go. Um, I mean, the point of difference really is the fact that the mackerel is more meaty, okay? But then it could be just that it's a bigger fish, okay? But if you're going to be flaking it all and just like pureeing it, it probably doesn't matter too much. But I'm going to stick this on a tray and then I'm going to steam it up. So just give me a second. In all honesty, so I'm going to throw it in this tray and I'm going to steam the two fish up. Hopefully it won't take too long. In all honesty, look, in Malaysia, they would usually boil the fish, okay? Um, and then just kind of like dish it out and all that. The reason why I'm steaming it is because I want to keep the water in the steamer for the next phase where I actually steam the noodles. Sorry, my, my shoes are just a bit squishy at the moment. So I'm going to steam this, uh, keep the water clear and I'm going to use the water to steam the uh, noodles that we're going to make from scratch, okay? So in these go. Okay, now, um, we're going to now make the sauce, okay? So the sauce, let me get this out of the way. The sauce, I've got this here. This has got a bit of oil in it. It's got about like one and a half tablespoons of oil. Like I said, I'm following a Malay recipe for this uh, noodle dish which has ratios of the uh, different flours that go into it a little bit different to what we use in um, fresh rice noodles or ji chong fun or ho fun whatever you want to call it okay but uh, so we'll see how it turns out I have a feeling it's going to turn out a little bit more uh, more chewy but we'll see anyway so for this I need to get a measuring cup So I've got some rice flour over here. Now, this is what it looks like. Speaking of which, guys, if you're watching from North America, uh, I came across this fabulous website just by hanging around over uh, on uh, this Facebook page, right, about a different type of cooking. Um, some American posted a website called importfoods.com. I think it's plural importfoods.com and what it is is an uh, online Thai uh, store where you can buy pretty much all the kinds of ingredients I use in these broadcasts including like frozen uh, or fresh galango and all that sort of stuff right so go and check it out if you're struggling to follow me as far as the kind of ingredients I use and you want to attempt some of the recipes I do go and check it uh, importfoods.com I'm pretty sure it's .com and um, yeah, import food or import foods. I'm th I think it's import foods, okay? So I'm gonna stick some flour in here. I'm not being very precise as usual. So this is the rice flour. Rice flour you should be able to find at pretty much any Asian grocery store. And I always tell people that with Asian grocery stores, people think of Asia as like one homogenous culture, right? Whereas in fact, we can be quite diverse okay like if i go into a, a an asian grocery store run by a korean i get pretty lost over there okay because the stuff they sell um are, are really quite different to what, what i use okay okay so this is uh tapioca flour by the way guys and you can use corn cornstarch as well if you want so tapioca starch or cornstarch okay so some of that in there and now I'm going to add a bit of salt. Like, remember, I've got a bit of oil in there. That's actually used oil. I used it to fry uh, fish that had, uh, that had turmeric in it, which is why it's a little bit yellow. So the noodles might actually end up with a yellow hue, but just pretend it's, it's, it's uh, white, okay? So in goes the water. Okay, and I'm just going to mix this up. Let's see if a spoon will do the job. 
cutting that. Just use some glue. So I might use some glue actually. Hi, sweetie. He's stepping on my feet. No one say hello. Say hello to everybody. Okay. Just let me get this. Okay. Well, then you will come with Mama, baby. Come with Mama. Here we go. Okay, so get this mixed up. And by the way, thank you guys, uh, all those people who participated in the Bon Maman giveaway. I mentioned there were going to be three winners and they were going to get two jars of jams each courtesy of Bon Maman. But I had so many people uh, participate that I ended up giving... Uh, I ended up giving some consolation prizes prizes to seven other people. Okay, so the, the, the giveaways are over, but there are a total of 10 winners. Three who won the concerts, courtesy of Bon Mama, and seven who basically won consolation prizes. I keep saying prizes, prizes that I'm giving out, okay? So this mix that. And I'm going to let this sit for a little bit. So remember, this is uh, rice flour with a little bit of tapioca flour. The rice flour will give it the uh, al dente texture. The tapioca flour helps to keep everything together, okay? So the higher the ratio of tapioca flour, the more sticky and um, soft your noodles will be and vice versa as well okay so usually you'll find with a lot of asian recipes it'll be a mixture of rice flour and tapioca flour even when you're deep frying anything as well noah what you saying what are you saying what are you saying you gonna watch tv hey you gonna watch tv hey you gonna go watch tv hey you gonna go watch tv come over here yeah, come over here come over here good boy over here sweetie Okay, now the other thing I need to make is the sauce that goes with this. Okay, now I have to admit first up guys, this dish usually has a lot of different types of fresh herbs that go into it, okay? But I don't actually have uh, a lot of, uh, I don't have, um, I don't think I've got any fresh herbs lying around, okay? But I just want to show you, I kind of feel like it's important for you guys to see that even in the absence of a lot of ingredients, you can still make a decent um, attempt at this recipe, okay? But usually the kind of herbs that would go into this would be um, what we call, uh, is everything working okay? Just hang on a sec. Um, Okay, cool. Oh, and yeah, by the way, we've just reached a milestone of a uh, uh, hundred plus followers. I know it's only taken me like how, how long, right? I promise you all these people who follow me on other platforms, they are such tough nuts to crack in terms of getting them to also follow me on Twitch. Um, and I think part of the reason is that, um, part of the reason is that you really have to catch my broadcast live because my recorded Twitch broadcast only stay on Twitch for two weeks and after that like you can still find them on YouTube because it's being simul simultaneously broadcast on YouTube Shush. Shush. okay <laughs> okay so now uh, with the sauce I need um, yeah as far as herbs that usually go into this you know whatever you can find at your local grocery store will do it okay it just adds a nice kind of like refreshing flavor to your dish but absent that um, don't worry about it but you know in all honesty the kind of herbs that you need if you were to stay faithful to the recipe are a little bit tricky to get here in Australia okay it really depend, depends on which part of uh, Australia you live in so leave it out leave it out I'm not gonna miss it too much um, usually those red uh, those pink uh, ginger bud flowers will go into this like thinly sliced as well I'm gonna leave it out tonight because um, some people think it's indispensable with some of the recipes you use, um, some of the Malaysian recipes you use them in, but um, to me, I can live without it, in all honesty. I will have some vegetables in it, um, basically consisting of bean sprouts, plus uh, cucumber, plus, I, I don't know if I've got any snake beans left, but usually you would chop snake beans into tiny little like um, slices and throw them in as well. But as far as the sauce, the sauce takes um, ginger, so I've got a little knob of ginger over here and it takes garlic right 
so I'm gonna throw some garlic in. You can leave the garlic out. Some recipes do not um, call for garlic, right? But I do like my garlic, so I'm gonna throw some garlic in. And also it calls for lemongrass, okay? Usually you would have like, a, if you've got like a fresh lemongrass, you can just bruise the lemongrass and then simmer it in the sauce, okay? What I did the last time was I had like a, um, fresh lemongrass but instead of bruising it I actually minced it okay and I threw it directly into the soup and simmered it but I didn't really in all honesty enjoy like kind of like chewing through like the bits of lemongrass in my soup I think I prefer my soup a little bit less uh, you know fibrous um, so this time I actually have pre-minced lemongrass okay this is something you can find uh, in a lot of Asian grocery stores in the freezer section, okay, we'll say lemongrass mince. So this is usually frozen, comes in a block this size, I mean they vary in size. Um, but what I'm going to do, because it's already pre-minced, and if I, if I had that like lemongrass stick this time around, I would have just bruised it, but because it's already pre-minced and I don't want the fibers like um, in the soup, okay, I'm going to throw them in a muslin bag, okay? So I'm just going to toss some of this in. Okay, and I'm going to simmer this bag in with the sauce and let's see how it turns out. And then I want some onion. Okay, so this is just your good old brown onion. And by the way, I always have to say this, if you're watching this on YouTube, it's kind of too late now because I forgot to say it at the start, but if you're watching this on YouTube and expect this to be a short and sweet video, it's not going to happen because this is um, broadcast live. Uh, I will at some point actually edit it down into a shorter video, so you can wait around for that and look for it titled, same title, but bracket highlights only, okay? But if you think um, this is one of my... Uh, short little three minute videos. It's not, so uh, if that's gonna be a problem, uh, best that you leave now. Okay, so what I wanna do, I'm just gonna throw this into my thermo cook, and I'm gonna puree it. And then I'm actually gonna add the other stuff in there and cook the sauce in this thermo cook itself. And the reason for that is my steamer is being used for steaming so I need to make the soup in something else and the easiest would be to just use the cooking function in the thermal cook but let's puree this first all the bits in there and to that I want to add some water so I need to go and grab some water I'm just gonna scrape this down a little bit okay, you could probably yeah I, I might actually mince this a little bit more I forgot about the ginger needing a little bit more time to puree Like I said, I'm going to actually cook everything in here, okay? So I'm going to add the fish to it eventually, but in the meantime, I'm going to add some seasoning, okay? This here is what we call tamarind slices, okay? In Malay, it's called asam gulugor, okay? This is different from the tamarind fruit, 
that you get the pulp from, okay, it's actually a different type of fruit, but it does the same thing, it, pro it produces a sour flavor in your dish. So if you don't have this, you can just use lemon juice, okay? Uh, I'm actually going to add it to my bag of lemongrass, right? Let's see if I can open it up, okay. Again, just so that um, I don't have to fish them out afterwards. So I've got about three or four slices, about three slices of um, tamarind in there. Noe, uh, 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 what you doing? What you doing, sweetie? Go watch your show, baby. Go watch your TV. Go watch your TV. Go watch TV. Okay, so I'm going to throw this in there. And I'm going to add... Some, just some white pepper, okay? And I'm going to add a bit of salt. If you follow me long enough, you know that I cook by instinct, okay? As far as uh, quantities and all that, I go by instinct. And this is something that you will actually hopefully start to do as well. If you cook Asian food often enough, you start to kind of like not worry about measuring everything. I know men, for whatever reason, like to be very, very specific. You think this is like a science experiment or something. It's not, okay? Because um, there are lots and lots of other factors that will uh, affect the final outcome of the dish. So it's kind of a little bit redundant to yeah. kind of measure everything to death. Okay, so I'm putting just a little bit of a sugar in there and then we'll adjust all the flavors at the end okay so we've got all that in there i want to add some water so let me just go and get some no yeah come to mama baby some stuff out of the way a little bit now I'm, I've, I've actually got some chicken stock okay if you know uh, about my background you know I run a Malaysian food business still even though I've scaled it right down to where I only basically produce food once a week but it does mean that I usually have like um, things like um, chicken stock and that sort of stuff lying around in my fridge so I'm going to throw that in but this is non-essential okay so don't feel that you need to make some chicken stock for this dish to work I'm just trying to use it up. Okay, when I say chicken stock, this is actually concentrated chicken stock, okay? I, this is produced from me actually uh. cooking um, the chicken that I use for my business. I, I cook it essentially sous vide style, okay? And it produces some concentrated juice that I then save and then use it in my cooking but like I said you know um, so if this were not concentrated I would put a lot more in but because it is I'm just gonna use a bit and then top it up with water right and now I'm gonna add coconut milk to it okay coconut cream this is just packet coconut cream so in this goes Simmer this. But this is my leftover fish. I know it looks terrible, okay? It's like the those two fishes, like I said, I bought two of each the other day and I actually um, fried them up. I actually um, kind of coated them with some seasoning and some turmeric and then I fried it up, okay, just to see, I pan fried it just to see how it tasted. So this is. Um, what's left of it so I'm gonna throw I'm gonna like flake the flesh and throw it in gentle please baby gentle gentle no you wanna you wanna play with your ball where's your ball ball hey where's your ball ball here we go good boy are you good boy? yeah no he's helping yeah good boy I'm going to add the fish afterwards, so just let me cover this because I think the other lot's finished. So 
I'm just going to actually turn that turn that on to cook, right? Because a the thermal mm. cook actually can do the cooking for you as well. So I'm going to turn it set it mm. at a specific temperature for a specific length of time, and I'm, um, yeah, I'll let it cook like that. <laughs> And we're gonna check on the fish. Okay, so the fish is done. I'm gonna take it out. I'm just gonna put a couple of things away before no one knocks them over. So here's the fish, right? It's a bit of water in it because I, the water from the steamer, unless you actually, uh, usually the reagents when we steam anything, we usually um, kind of wrap the lid with a tea towel or similar, okay, to kind of like catch the water, but I didn't do that. So there's some water sitting at the bottom of the pan, which is fine because that can all go into the soup. Okay, so what you want to do is um, remove the flesh. Well, I'm going to start with the cooked fish over here. Now, you got to keep in mind this fish because it was coated in um, turmeric, which is a, like a yellow colored spice, right? It's going to end up making my sauce a little bit yellow. So I'm going to be a little bit careful because I want to actually aesthetically have it look as close as possible to how it should look, right? Come, baby. Are you a good boy? Are you a good boy? Okay. Okay. So essentially what you're going to end up with is kind of like a creamy fish soup, right? Uh, that's got a, a, a hint of um, uh, sourness to it, right? But okay, so this is the fish. Let's see how we go We're trying to get some flesh from it. The outer layer I might leave out best I can because like I say, um, that's where the turmeric, the spice is basically most um, prevalent. Okay, so this is just like cooked fish meat. I'm going to just throw it in here because all of it's going into the pan anyway. Okay, so I'm just flaking this. And usually when I do this sauce, I like to have some I like to have some of the fish pureed in, blended in with the soup. And some of it just, you know, flaked um, on top, okay? Noah, what are you doing? What are you doing, baby? What are you doing? What are you doing? Shush, 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 shush. Okay. What are you saying? What are you saying? Okay. So that's this. So don't forget, if you're watching this anywhere apart from Twitch, you can follow me on Twitch. This is where I can interact with you guys, right? Christina, hello. How are you? Good to have you join us. So if you're watching this anywhere except Twitch, Twitch is the only place where I monitor the comments, okay? Sometimes someone will tell me or someone commented on YouTube or on Facebook, but I don't always catch those, right? So if you want to interact with me, go and follow me on Twitch, the URL of which is just www.jackiem.live, L-I-V-E, okay? And that will redirect you to my Twitch um, profile. And the long my, my, my actual Twitch handle, twitch.tv, um, is uh, twitch.tv slash Jackie M Food, okay? But yeah, Jackie M dot live will take you to the same page. And if you're after the recipe, the recipes usually show up 
within a couple of days yeah. sometimes a little bit longer i mean if they're a bit more involved and i'm a bit busy they may take up to a week or so and by the way the winners of the uh bon maman giveaway i will get your products sent out uh by this friday okay i told everyone they will go out early part of this week but uh because of the anzac day public holiday and also because of some of my other projects um it looks like friday will be the earliest i can get them out i'm sorry about that if you're eagerly anticipating them but they will get out to you okay so we've got this so again you can see this i don't know if you can make out that there's a slight yellow hue so onto these actual like uh steam fish they should peel off quite easily because they're hot, right? And there you go. So just be careful with the bones. Okay. And just peel them off best you can. And let's see how that, yeah, that's cooking away. I was going to offer another giveaway for tomorrow night, the, uh, the Douglas Lim comedy uh, show. Uh, the show is called uh, Buy One, Free One, which is actually, if you're Malaysian, you will know what it means because um, in Australia, when you've got sales on, they call it Buy One, Get One Free or Bog Off for short. In Malaysia, because of the way we speak English, right? Uh, when the stores are on sale, when they've got like a, that, that buy one, get one free offer, they call it buy one, free one. Okay, <laughs> It sounds a little bit odd to uh, non-Westerners, but yeah, you see them all over in Malaysia at shopping malls and whatever when they have big sales on, okay, the buy one, get one free offer. So the show itself is called buy one, free one, but um, that is not, uh, that does not mean buy one ticket you get one free okay it just means that there, there are two comedians is douglas and uh kwa jen han who's also another very famous malaysian comedian um basically it's kind of like you get a two for one deal right <laughs> two guys for the price of uh, one ticket okay so it's getting rid of the last of the bones here so just be careful, like, you know, apart from the spine, you've also got some bones along the side, usually. And just kind of like give it a nice rummage through to make sure this, that it's all gone. This is going to be too much fish for the amount of soup I'm making, so I'm not going to use all of it. So it's just got bits of bone in there still. Yeah, the, the tomorrow night I'm going to be going to watch the show, but I had one spare ticket, but it's odd to kind of like give away just one ticket. So I'm going to keep both tickets and try and find someone to go with me. <laughs> Okay, but if you've never watched Malaysian comedy before, you should go and watch these guys. They're, like I said, some of the most uh, successful, not just in Malaysia, but in Southeast Asia. They're very, very well known. They're so well known, like I said, I had no idea who they were four years ago when I posted a random video of uh, Douglas. And it's got more views than most of my 250 plus cooking videos that I've also got up on my YouTube channel. So thank you Douglas for the uh, <laughs> for the YouTube ad uh, YouTube ad uh, payouts. Okay. I think that's about it. Let's throw some of this into the soup. Okay, so let me get this away. So 
So apparently, throwing that, uh, apparently I've turned the heat up too high and it's bubbled over or there's too much. So I'm gonna have to switch the contents into my next uh, jug. <laughs> So it's totally my fault, but I've lost half the contents of the soup in here. I'm going to top it up with a bit more uh, water, and I guess, and some fish. So moral of the lesson, don't overfill your uh, your saucepan or whatever it is you're cooking your soup in. Okay, so I've got this much left, which isn't too bad. And I'm going to put on some gloves and throw in some of the fish. And let it simmer some more. Okay, still feeling a couple of strands of uh, bone in here. I could swear that that uh, I'm just going to turn down my the show he's watching at the moment the Teletubbies. I could swear the volume just went up. Okay. Hopefully, most of the bones gone. You can always kind of like, if you're using a, uh, a thermo cook or a thermo mix, you can always whiz it at the end and just kind of like blend, blend it so fine that, you know, the bones get dissolved into the whole mixture. Okay. Let's throw this in. Okay, so in goes the fish. This is going to cook another 10 minutes or so. And I'm going to now move the uh, steamer across and start steaming the noodles. Hopefully no dramas there. turn this on and this is the batter you can see the yellow hue is from the oil okay because like I said I used the oil to fry the turmeric fish with previously but it shouldn't look yellow it should just be yeah the, the final product should look white okay just gonna put some gloves on hopefully this comes back up to temperature pretty quickly I made some chili. If you want to follow how to make the chili paste, um, go back to my website jackiem.com.au and just look for laksa kelantan. K E L A N T A N. I made the chili in my last show. Okay, so I've got some leftover that I'm going to serve this with. But it's very very simple. It's just chilies that are pureed with. A, I forget about I even put. I think I put some tomato in that just to make it mild. Okay, but. 
you, you know, I mentioned it in my upcoming blog post that a lot of recipes, a lot of Malaysian flavors, right, and Southeast Asian, Asian really in general, um, you can replicate the same flavors using different ingredients, different okay. combinations of ingredients, okay, depending on what you want to achieve. So you, you're not really tied to any specific ingredient per se. So if you don't have tamarind, replace it with something else. You don't have uh, chilies, replace it with something else. So there are always different ways to slice and dice a recipe, okay. Um, so don't stress out too much about it. You Game Broke Podcast. Hey, how you doing? Come, baby. So this is just heating up. And I need a pan to steam the noodles with. I had a non-stick pan. I'm trying to remember where I put it. Oh, I see it in the kitchen. So let's try it with this. This is just a round non-stick pan. It's your typical, I, I think I bought this at like a $2 store or something like that. But I bought these. These are, they're not non-stick, okay? I bought these in Cabramatta and I found them a little bit of a pain because of the fact that they're non-stick, okay? So I'm, I'm going to attempt making this noodle using this non-stick round pan. So I've got the batter here. So if you're just joining me now, the batter was just rice flour plus tapioca or cornstarch plus water plus a little bit of salt plus a bit of oil okay so pretty pretty simple and I'm gonna throw the pan in here just heat it up a little bit and I want the tea towel Noah's fixated on shutting the and any any cupboard door I leave open Noah has to run over and close it Okay, so I've got this tea towel and I'm going to actually just cover the pot lid with it, okay? Because otherwise too much of the steam is going to end up as water in the pan. So I've got that and I'm going to pour just a thin layer of this in there. That might be a little bit too much. Let's see how we go. And what you want to do, you want to work on a level surface with this, okay? But um, let's just kind of like even it out a little bit and then cover it up. Okay. And this should take uh, like a minute, hopefully. And let's see. I forgot to turn on my uh, Thermomix. I've got a nice puddle of soup all over my kitchen appliances up the back. I'm going to have fun cleaning up after this. Okay, you see how this is turning out. We'll cook this a little bit longer. And where's my... Like I say, the yellow here, you can't really tell on camera, but it actually looks yellow here, but it shouldn't, okay? It's only yellow because of the oil I'm using. I'm going to dish this out. Okay. It could probably do with a little bit more cooking, but we'll work on the next one. And usually you would want to actually oil this a little bit. But because it's non-stick, I may be able to avoid having to do so. So I'm going to try and make a, a slightly thinner layer. So before you close it up, just kind of like 
twirl it around a little bit as it slowly cooks um, it will start to stick to the bottom of the pan and that allows you to move it around just to make sure it's evenly thick okay okay just cover it no we come to mama come at mama come 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 over here over here good boy Okay, let's see how this turns out. I need some oil, but the only oil I've got left is that like, really yellow turmeric oil, okay? So I'm not going to add to it. But um, from what I saw in Kelantan when I was over there, these noodles do look thicker in... Um, than your average Chinese rice noodle roll, okay? But the ingredients are basically the same, just the ratios of noodles, of, uh, rice flour to water and all that are slightly different, okay? Let me just cook this a little bit more just to make sure that it's cooked through properly. And I want, look, I'm going to use some sesame oil to, um, to, to, to kind of like help with the sticking. That was rolling around on the floor now. Oh, thanks for sharing your skills. Oh, thank you. What are you making? Okay, I, what I'm making is this particular northern Malaysian dish. It's called laksam, right? And essentially is a kind of like a, a fish soup. And the soup is made from um, onion and garlic that's been like pureed, simmered in coconut milk plus water, plus um, fish, okay? So the fish is kind of like steamed and then flaked and then um, thrown in with everything and simmered and then you add the seasoning to it as well. No one? No. And then you add the seasoning to it as well. And then separately, you actually make the noodles fresh, okay? These rice noodles that are made fresh, like this. So I'm steaming the rice noodles now and the noodles... I keep mentioning, I'm, I'm a little bit um, thrown off by the yellowness in the noodles and the yellowness is because, like I mentioned, because I'm using um, used oil here and the oil was yellow because of the previous dish I cooked in it, okay? But the noodles are made from like a batter, like a really thin batter that's a combination of rice flour, tapioca starch or corn starch if you like, if, and water, and a little bit of salt and a bit of oil as well. Hence the hence the yellow texture, the yellow oil I'm using. Okay, so let's steam this a little bit further, and um, I've got the vegetables. So usually traditionally, the kind of vegetables that work really well with this, you need to shred them first of all, and second of all, you you want something like cabbage. Okay, I'm not a huge fan of raw cabbage myself. So the last time I did this dish, I actually used lettuce, which I'm out of, I think, at the moment. Um, and also, you want cucumber, shredded cucumber. Okay, and you can also use. Um, Pineapple as well, fresh pineapple, kind of like cut into matchsticks um, sizes, right? And usually you will have some fresh herbs through this as well, okay? So whatever kind of fresh herbs you can find at your local store will work pretty well, okay? I don't have any fresh herbs lying around today, so I'm going to skip those, but it will still make for a pretty interesting dish without them, okay? So don't stress out if you're missing a, an ingredient or two here and there, okay? So the soup's final flavor should be like um, a little bit, um, you know, uh, a little bit sour from the tamarind slices that go into it, okay? So the tamarind slices, um, if you can't find tamarind slices, uh, just use lemon juice. Just kind of like drizzle some um, lemon juice over it, okay? So I'm just going to do one more roll and then I'll cut up some vegetables and then hopefully the soup should be done 
so again, when you pour it in, you're going to find that, like especially if you don't have a completely level surface to work from, you'll find that parts of the base are not completely covered with the batter. So you just want to move it around gently, but you move it around, um, it will only start sticking to the base when it starts cooking, okay? So you let it cook a little bit, then kind of like twirl it around just to make sure the rest of the surface is covered. So let's cover this and let this steam properly. For the soup, I forgot. I'm going to just throw in a little bit of uh, chicken powder in this. I, you know, I, if you've been watching me long enough, you know I'm a huge fan of using uh, chicken stock granules or chicken chicken powder. Okay, um, but of course you can leave it out. Really, it's, it's it's just something that I'm just so used to adding to everything I eat. So this is the chicken powder I use. Okay, this is a normal brand K N O R R. Okay. Marco Pierre White, the uh, famous British chef, uses this brand of chicken powder as well. The difference between him and me is that he gets paid to endorse it, I don't. Okay, so I'm just covering that to cook. And let's check on these rice flour rolls, okay. So you can see that, and you just gotta roll it up like this. And I'm just gonna do another one. So I've got this mandolin that I usually use for shredding my Asian greens. This is a little bit finer. They come in different like thicknesses, but this is the final one. I usually have a thicker one that I can't find at the moment, so I've been using this, but uh, I think the thicker one would probably work better. But let's just go with this. So if you want bean sprouts, you can throw in some bean sprouts. I happen to have some left over here from my, again, from my business, so they're not in their prime. They're still crunchy, but the color is a little bit off, okay? And let's shred some cucumber. Okay, this is just about done. Just move this a little bit away. Let's see how long Noah stays away for. So just shred a cucumber over here. And I wanna, I, I, hopefully I can dig it out of my freezer, my overly full freezer. These are the ginger flower buds, okay, that I was talking about. You can buy them frozen here in Australia. Um, a little bit harder to find in Sydney than in Melbourne, because Melbourne has a larger Malaysian population, so they do tend to be a little bit more spoiled in terms of uh, ingredient availability. But these come frozen, and they are from, I believe, Malaysia. Yeah, products from Malaysia. And usually we would slice them um, and serve... Uh, serve it up in a salady dish or a similar okay it in all honesty um in all honesty growing up in my part of malaysia we never found a need for this okay so it, this wasn't like uh, the be all and end all of being able to cook malaysian food but you know as i kind of like as my repertoire expanded over the years and i learned more about the dishes you get from other parts of malaysia some people swear by it, they'll say, oh, you, can, you can't make an authentic such and such a dish without this, okay? But like I say, it's a nice to have, but, you know, I'm even going to, I might throw it in just for aesthetics, but um, we'll see how we go.
Okay, so this is ready. And usually you will know it's ready when it starts to lift up a little bit, okay, in the pan. So let's just roll this up. There you go. And I'm going to turn this off because we are done with this. And I just want to show you a little bit what these look like up close. Okay, so what you want to do once these cool down a little bit is actually cut this up into, into like um, strips, okay? Let's get a couple of things out of the way. So I'm going to chop up some... I've got some capsicum, I, yeah, I do have some chilies, so but I'm going to just cut up like some, thi um, shred up some capsicum just to sprinkle over the top of this dish for presentation purposes. But um, if you're, you know, if you, like, if you want to replicate the colour of like chilli but you can't handle the heat, use capsicum, okay? Sometimes I use capsicum, especially when I'm pureeing them into a sauce. Um, capsicum is much, much cheaper here in Australia, what you call peppers. Um, in, in other parts of the world we call them capsicum over here but if you want to make like a chili sauce or something like that and chilies are too expensive like they sometimes can be here in Australia I use uh, capsicum and then I boost the heat by adding some chili powder or crushed chili to it okay dried crushed chili Up. I've got some green onion here. I'm gonna cut up. We're gonna pretend the green onion are the uh, snake beans that I mentioned usually goes into this, okay? So, some green onion, okay. What happened to my computer? Okay. <laughs> okay, some green onion, okay. Let me just make sure. Things working okay. Okay. Cool. And then I think that's it. Let me just put another pair of gloves on. So I'll cut up one of these, like I said, just for aesthetics. Okay. So this is straight out of my freezer. That's why you can see it's a lot of crystallized. There you go. Get this out of the way. Okay, so this is my fish soup. It looks a little bit less coconutty than I would have liked because, I, like I said, I spilled half the contents earlier when the when it overflowed in my other jug. So just getting rid of that bag of uh, mince lemongrass. what I've got left. I'm just going to puree this in the blender. So this is the soup here, you can see it. I'm just going to taste test this, alright? Mm. 
Okay, it's pretty flavoursome. I'm just going to add a little bit more of the chicken powder and probably a little bit more of the sugar in it. But I've got to warn you, this does taste a lot more fishy than the batch I made uh, last week um, as part of that other dish, laksa kelantan. Um, so this type of fish does actually taste, uh, have a stronger flavor, okay? So if, that, if you find it a little bit um, uh, of an acquired taste, then go with the basil that I used in my previous recipe, okay? Okay, so just mix this up. And let's clean this up a little bit. Move some things out of the way. And onto the noodles. I'm going to cut them up. Hopefully they hold together okay. And I'm sorry about the yellow hue again. Like I said, this should actually look white. It's the yellow is because of the oil that I was using in this. Okay. Okay. So here are the noodles. You can see them over here. And I'm told, I don't know how true this is, I'm told they usually eat this dish by hand, okay? Because the fish gravy is quite thick. Um... ginger flour and I'm going to add a little bit more sauce okay. and this is the chili that I made the other day which of course you can leave out you know, if you're not a fan but let's scoop a little bit of the chili in there And I'm going to actually, you know, cheat and sprinkle some fried shallots over this. So this is my batch of fried shallots. If you've been following my broadcast, you'll know that I make these every, every six weeks or so. I put them into these clay pots. And every time I cook something that I think will go well with fried shallots, I sprinkle some over it. There you go, you can see this. Um, I always struggle with this particular broadcast because uh, this time of the night it's hard to get a good visual of the dishes that I end up cooking. I can't really step out and take a, a photo of it, but I'll do my best. Otherwise, I'll take another photo tomorrow when it's brighter and I don't need to use a flash. So there you go. Um, like I said, very similar to the laksa kelantan I made, except it uses these homemade rice noodle rolls. Okay, um, so give it a go. Like I say, uh, it's, it's pretty easy, right? It's just uh, onion, garlic, um, simmered with some coconut milk, with some pureed fish that's been separately poached or um, steamed. And then you just add some seasoning. Um, you don't have to use these noodles. You can just use whatever you've got lying around. You can even use like pasta, all right? You can use spaghetti or you can use some penne pasta. Pour it over your pasta or noodles um, and serve it up with some shredded vegetables, okay? Pretty easy, right? Okay, well, thank you guys. I know it's getting a little bit disruptive, so I will see you this Friday. Uh, like I said, this Friday, I'm going to be doing another vegan dish. Tell all your vegan friends. Um, otherwise, uh, next Monday, Australian time, is my next non-vegan broadcast. Uh, I find the vegan, like I said, the vegan broadcast to be challenging. Uh, it's good in a sense that it challenges me to think outside the box in terms of replicating like um, meat dishes, but uh, making vegan versions of them that are actually nice to eat, right? 
Having said that, I don't personally eat vegan. Um, so I've got that mental barrier to overcome. So I've got all this vegan food that's been sitting around. Um, so I'll see how long I continue with it for. But whatever it is I do, I'll always be cooking um, three times a week here on Twitch. And I will see you uh, next time. Thank you, guys. Ciao.